We got another exciting edition of the Ride and Dirty Show, the Ride and Dirty Podcast. Um, but you know what? Before I get into this show, I got a little PSA. <clears throat> so, all I'm gonna tell you guys is never ever, 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 ever drink cayenne pepper and lukewarm water. No, don't do it. Woo! Made my heart beat. One time for everybody on the check-in, man. One time for everybody on Facebook Live. Love you guys. Y'all done jumped in quicker than me. And, um, you know, again, it's the Ryan Dirty Radio Show, the Ryan Dirty Podcast. We bring you what's next now, bridging the gap between hip-hop and everyday life. All right, let's get into this thing. Today is the very, 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 very last day of September. All right? Today is September 30th, Sunday, September 30th. Hopefully, everybody had a great NFL Sunday. Hopefully, everybody's squad won. Oh, unfortunately, my Dirty Birds took the L, but my Cowboys took the W. And um, for that, hey, man, go Cowboys. All right. As we do it this time, all the time, I got to give you all our sponsors one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse. That's right. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural cleanser that does all kind of amazing things for your body. When I say amazing things for your body, it can slow down the aging process. It helps relieve stress, helps remove mucus and toxins from your body, as well as provide a balanced pH system. It also can help you lose up to 25 pounds in just 10 days. Now, you tell me who don't want to lose up to 25 pounds in 10 days. Now, you know what else? I'm going to drjuicecleanse.com as soon as I finish this show, and I'm going to see if it can help you lower your blood pressure because it probably will do a hell of a better job than cayenne pepper and lukewarm water. But one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse, please make sure you visit drjuicecleanse.com. Find out more about this amazing product. Find out about all the amazing things it can do to you. Start living healthier. Start living longer. And um, just start feeling better because it's a great, great product, and they do all kind of great, great things. Also, got to say one time for our sponsor, WMR Music Group. That's right, WMR Music Group. They are a marketing, promotions, and branding company. If you're an artist out there and you need to be marketed, promoted, or you just need to get your brand to the next level, well, WMR Music Group can definitely do that for you. You got to invest in yourself, though. That's the one thing I got to tell you. You can't just be the hottest artist out there and think that's the way you're going to take off. No, you have to invest in yourself. But... WMR Music Group has a six-week a six-week plan that will guarantee get your music into the hands of all the some of the the best tastemakers, some of the best DJs. They'll definitely hook you up with promotions, marketing. They can help you develop your career, help you get your talking skills up. Because I'm 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 telling you guys, a lot of times I'm doing interviews with you guys, and what you say make no sense. Uh, you can't articulate. They can definitely help help develop your speaking skills, help you say some of the right things. They're like having musical coaches. They're like musical t- tutors. So do me one big favor and make sure you visit WMRmedia.com. Find out about their six-week program and join today and get your music career to the next level. Now, another cool, dope thing about WMR Music Group, if you visit Facebook and you go to WMR Music Group on Facebook and make sure you click like on their Facebook page, there's always some interesting topics going on right there. They're all they're always answering questions. So that's free for the free free. But you can go in there and drop a question and get some expert advice, some 
from some real life experts. All right. All right. One time my man DJ Pony, Tony Pitt on the check in. One time my man Prez on the check in. Man, one time for everybody checking in. Man, when I see y'all checking in, I definitely appreciate y'all checking in. Tony Pitt, yes, I did get your message, and I'm going to get back at you real soon about that. All right. Let me see. Let me check out a little hip-hop news real quick. You know what? Before I get to hip-hop news, I'm about to go too fast and not give y'all birthdays. I don't have a lot, but let me give you the, what I got. All right. Today, I got to say happy birthday to my man. And you know what? My man was really holding it down about four or five years ago. Definitely, definitely holding it down. I would like to say he is the re-inventor, not the inventor, but the re-inventor of Auto-Tune. My man T-Pain turns 30 years, 33 years older. I actually thought T-Pain was a little bit older, but he's only 33 years old. So one time for my man T-Pain. Also got to say happy birthday to Miss Shay Johnson, a.k.a. Bucky. Uh, she's been seen on Flavor of Love. She's been seen on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. She's also been on Love and Hip Hop Miami. So one time for Shay Johnson, a.k.a. Bucky. She turns 35 years old today. And um, jumping on my, that's it for my celebrity friends. But I got all kind of Facebook friends who are celebrating birthdays today. So the first thing I got to do is say happy birthday to my man, Mr. Polka Jones, who's definitely, definitely been holding it down for years. One of the most played records. Um, in my set over at WRFG, so definitely happy birthday to my man, Polka Jones. I also got to say happy birthday to one of my player partners. Definitely been doing it for a long time. I got to say happy birthday to my man, Tin Man. Tin Man representing Barnesville, Georgia, but definitely doing this thing. Very, very dope MC. Tin Man, when you listen to Tin Man, Tin Man gives you what I call hick hop, but my man is definitely doing it on a major level. Not only is my man doing it on the mic, He's a credited fisherman, and he definitely got those low riders on deck. So happy birthday to my man, Tim Man. And last but not least, i got to say happy birthday to, um, this here is my real player partner. This is like my brother. Me and him go back over 20 years of definitely being friends, definitely being, my dude has just been there for me, man. Me and him got, you know what, back in the day, and I'm not even ashamed to say this, back in the day when I did get in trouble, me and, this man had my back, I had his back. Um, one of the sharpest dressed cats on Facebook and Instagram. I got to say happy birthday to my brother of another mother, my man Kevin Cleveland, a.k.a. Solo, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely happy birthday to my man Solo, okay? So, if y'all know T-Pain, if you know Shay Bucky Johnson, my man Poco Jones, my man Tin Man, for their birthday, go listen to some of their music. Check them out. Tell them what you think. And if you know my man Kevin Cleveland, definitely hit up his page and tell him happy birthday and any of these people. Make sure you tell them that you heard it was their birthday on the Ride and Dirty Show. And hopefully they had a great and amazing day. All right, everybody. I'm about to get into my guest book. Before I do, I want to let everybody know last night me and me and my queen had a chance to go check out the Trap Music Museum. I got to say congratulations. And one time my man Doug Peterson, one time my man T.I., one time for everybody over at Grand Hustle, because y'all worked really, really hard to create the Trap Music Museum. Um, I know a lot of people, when you hear Trap Music Museum, you got to be like, what the f But you know what? They really worked really, really hard. It's really, really nice. Um, they have a Rick Ross room. They have a 2 chains room. They actually have the, the uh, Pink Trap Cadillac in there from the Pink Trap House. Um, man, it's just a homage to this thing we call trap music. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that um, I would like to feel like I was one of the one of the people that when trap music was, 15 years ago when trap music was dropped, if you go get the T.I. album trap music, you'll see my name in the credits. And I'm not saying that the name drops, I'm saying that I was definitely around when trap music, the phrase was being coined. I was around when he was working on an album. I was one of the retailers definitely on the forefront, helping to push it and Man, it is so dope to see trap music celebrated. Um, they got a Yo Gotti room. They got a Young Jeezy room. They got a T.I. room. Man, I'm telling you, trap music museum. Um, I'm definitely going to give you all the times and the operation hours when that thing is open. But if you get a chance and you love hip hop and you say you're doing it for the culture, then definitely go visit the trap music museum, man. It's 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 It's, it's dope. It's dope. I got to say it's dope. That's all I can say is dope, and I want you all to go visit, all right? One time for Grand Hustle. All right, man, it seems like the game is in a little financial situation. You know he has a marijuana business out in L.A. Well, his profits are over $7 million, 
may be seized to help pay off a debt. We're going to see what happens, but it seems like Game has a debt that he's he owes someone, and um, they're basically going to court attacking the profits of over $7 million that he's made off his marijuana business to pay them back. So, we're going to see. One time, my man DJ Khaled. You know DJ Khaled is everywhere. He's on the um, show with my man Diddy the Four. He's making records. Well, he just bought a $25 million mansion. That's right. He just bought a $25 million mansion on Miami Beach. Salute to you, DJ Khaled. Thumbs up, man. You're definitely doing all kind of amazing things. One time again for DJ Khaled and a brand new crib. All right. If you haven't been on The Rock, you do know... Yeah, my man Lil Wayne dropped his album, Carter 5, after years and years of holdup. He just dropped the Carter 5 Friday, and it is set to be the third highest first week numbers of 2018. He's scheduled to sell between 475000 to 525000 first week. So I got to say hats off and salute to my man Lil Wayne. He's definitely going to be number one on the chart, and like I said, he's scheduled to be the number three Highest selling album of 2018. All right, my last little bit of hip hop news, man. I gotta say, congratulations to the estate of Mr. Tupac Shakur. They have snatched back the masters of his music. All that unreleased stuff, all that, all that unauthorized stuff that you heard from Tupac since he's been dead. Well, you know, after years of nasty court battle with his label, his estate now again owned the rights to his music. So hopefully, the estate will get together. And maybe we'll get some post-Tupac thorough releases. None of that crap. Some post-thorough releases from my man Tupac. Oh, last but not least, man. One time my man Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco also released the album. Um, he started to release his album at the same time Lil Wayne. But he it's a theme album. And um, the theme of the album is it's basically rapping in perspectives of the slaves who jumped off the slave ship during bondage. And live life free underwater. So if you get a chance to check out Lupe's Fiasco album, please do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, my phone lines are lit all the way up. So you know what? I've talked enough. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, with no further ado, you know how we do right about this time. So let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on the line I have Mr. Sauce Fame. What's going on, my G? Hey, what's going on, man? Man, trying to maintain, trying to do my thing. The first thing I got to say is I see that you're from Dallas, Texas. Please tell me you are a Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we just want, you know how they go. All right, man. One time for the Dallas Cowboys. So, Mr. South Fame, the first thing I got to ask you, what's it like growing up in the D? Growing up in the D, man, hey, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but you also got a lot of haters out here. I mean, whatever you do, get on your ground and just make it happen for yourself to be successful. Okay, that's definitely what's up. That's definitely what's up. So, who inspired you or what inspired you and made you want to become an entertainer? When I when I was 15, I used to throw parties in Dallas. I mean, I used to MC parties. So, like, when I used to get on the mic, I used to like the way the crowd was. Like, it was, it was like the crowd was just moving with whatever I say. So on um, on past that, I started acting. When I started acting, I just fell in love with like stage plays, how the audience feed off what you do. So I mean, after acting, I went into rapping, and ever since then, I've been rapping and real. Okay, so what was it like being in stage plays, and what was that transformation like from being in stage plays and acting to getting on the microphone? Sauce, you still with me, my guy? My man, Sauce, Sauce dropped. Let me drop his joint, and we're going to get him back on the line, all right? All right, there we go. All right. Sauce, so again, I, I see you dropped off. I got you back on. So what was, what was that transformation like going from acting to getting on the microphone? The transformation was different connects. Like in acting, I had a lot of, I knew a lot of underground movie stars. And like when I transferred into acting, I mean, it transferred into rapping, it was like I had to get certain connects in the rap business to help me merge with the acting business. 
Okay. So, is the do you have to have a different type of work ethic from being in stage? Because I know being in stage plays, you got to learn those lines on the fly. You got to be impromptu. You got to be on point. Um, is there a different type of work ethic you got to have from being in the studio and performing to being an actor, or can you incorporate the same type of work ethic? To me, it's all the same. It depends on what your work ethic is. Like, my work ethic was hard. So it was like, I always, I stayed in my scripts. I stayed knowing my lines. Like, any time when it was time to get on stage, I knew what I had to do. Just like rap music, when it's time to get on stage, I can recite you all my songs without even having to, okay, what did I say in this song? So it's always the tight, it's always about your memorization. All right. Okay. That's definitely what's up. That's definitely what's up. So, once you start getting into emceeing and 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 doing music, um, how has the Texas and the Dallas scene supported you? I mean, in Dallas is kind of hard. Don't get me wrong, but like, I mean, Dallas is starting to blow up. You know, we got a star out here named Yellow B, and he just popped with that. That's on me, baby. So it's like more Dallas artists is starting to you know take off. Like we just had another dude out here called Tye. He signed with Ice Cube Lynch Mob. So it's like Dallas is starting to get that buzz, but now it's a lot of Dallas rappers. So it's about how you market yourself to get your music out to where you want people to hear you, to hear, to let you say what you be saying for them to like understand what you're talking about. Like, Okay. You know what? I didn't realize y'all are was from Dallas, so it's definitely what's up. I know for a long time, though, Dallas has definitely been popping. Like, y'all, you know, do you D-Town Boogie? Because I know the D-Town Boogie was definitely big out in Dallas. Man, I used D-Town Boogie when I was little, man. I'm too big now. Okay, that's what's up. So, how how does the Dallas music scene differ from the Houston music scene? Dallas, I mean, Dallas music, like, it's, it's different because of some fact, like, Dallas going to tell you about, they, they design uh, these women. They're going to tell you, they're going to tell you things in the streets. Like you say, trap music, that's what they're going to give you all the time because that's what they know. But then, like, on the East Coast, you're going to get, you're going to get true stories. You're going to get everything about their life. So it's like, it's two different, it's two different sides when it comes to, like, when you say Dallas and Eastern music. Eastern music, they gonna give you them true stories, and make you feel them like where you gonna feel sorry for them. Like in Dallas, they gonna tell you about how to how you whip a brick, how you how you stuff a pee, and how you do stuff like that. I'm getting it wrong, it's all good, but at the end of the day, I wanna hear something about like true stories. So that's what I tell in my music. I tell true stories. Okay, all right. Now, when you speak of your music, what do you want your fans to take when they listen to Sauce Fame? What do you want them to take from your music? When they listen to my music, I just want them to have good vibes. They basically see like what South Swain went through and they hear it on a five beat where they can move their feet. And so everything I tell you in my songs is a true story. I ain't telling no lies about it. But the beat gonna also get you moving too. Okay. Now that name South Fame, that's a very, very interesting name. Tell me how that name came about. When I was throwing parties, I had a promotion team called Sauce Game. So, like, that was just, like, we just came up with something, just called it Sauce Game. So, again, people just start calling me Sauce just because that I used to run Sauce Game. So, like, when I went out to Tyler, I mean, like, I went to college in Tyler. So, the name really died down, but, like, my big brother kept going. So, like, he just used to call me Sauce around the campus. And, like, people just start calling me Sauce. Fame came about when I started rapping. And when I started acting, I got a group of I got a group of partners, and we and I call it fame for all my expectations. People mean famous, but what it really means is for all my expectations. Everybody in that circle that I have, I've got the same expectation, and that's to be successful. Okay, that's dope. So, how many people are affiliated with your crew, and how many are are, are artists? I got seven people, and one of them is artists. The rest is they get the music out. And some of them do marketing too. All right. Now, I'm glad you mentioned your team because I always tell people, especially when they're breaking into the music business, it's very, very important to incorp incorporate the right people around you and have the right team. Like, how hard was it for you to assemble the right people to help you get your career to the next level? 
I don't get me wrong, it was tough because you you also you got people that you can say, hey man, you wanna help you wanna help get in the uh, team, help us do some stuff with the music. But you got some that's gonna say, Hey bro, how much how much it costs? How much I'm getting paid out of it? See the seven that I got, they don't really care about the cost. They really just they really all just wanna help get to one destiny and that's for everybody to be successful. They know if I pop, they pop. We all pop together. Okay. Now, I mentioned Dallas. Like how competitive is the Dallas market especially when it comes to independent music is there a lot of support for you guys or is it more more you know we're gonna look the other way it's like at one point i was just like i mean i'd rather go to another city and pop because dallas got so many rappers like everywhere you look on every corner it's a rapper it's either a rapper or a chapel it's one of the two that's that's all dallas got and i'm gonna tell you the truth so it's like in in the music business, it's not about it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. When it come when it come towards Dallas, because it's so many it's so many rappers. Like when you say Dallas, you saying Dallas in for a word because we both merged together. So it's like a lot of rappers. But it's all about you got the rappers that's okay. Yeah, I'm rapping or whatever. But they rapping for their partners. You got some that's rapping for the choppers. But at the end of the day. You don't have them on, they're going to pay for studio time, but you don't have them people going out, going to different cities to get their music out. You don't have the ones investing in themselves, like you said. They ain't investing in themselves. So it's like, it's a difference between when you say rappers and actually the people that's investing in themselves so they can be a rapper. Okay, all right. Now, how will you? how do you differ from other rappers that we might hear from your area? I mean, rappers that you hear from my area, they gonna tell you, they gonna tell you a lot of travel. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you two stories. I'm gonna tell you what's really going on in life. I'm gonna tell you what happened in my life. I'm gonna tell you like things that go on in everyday life. But when you hear rappers from over here in Dallas, they gonna tell you about how they hit the shop house, how they do this and how they do that, moving for drugs. You know, I mean, I don't knock nobody, I don't knock nobody else, but that's how they get it, and that's how we differ. Okay, but hey. So look, what projects do you have out or what projects do you have on the horizon? Right now I have True Story. True Story that's out on all platforms. And then I have True Story 2.0 that's coming out soon in October. Okay, all right. That's definitely, that's definitely what's up. What, was it hard? Like, because a lot of independent artists that I speak to, they say one of the hardest things for them to do is find the right producers to help bring their sound together. Was that hard for you or easy? For me, it was, I kept with, I kept it moving with one producer. Like I heard his beats one time on YouTube and it was so like the beat fit my flow so well, I just kept using it. So when I, uh, when I got I seen some more beats, so he started sending me some more beats by name, his name Rock T. So he started sending me more beats, and I started putting my own flow to it. Before you knew it, I had my own twist on it, and people were just loving it, and they loved the beats, how, how they was hitting, and how the 808 was hitting. Okay, so that's definitely what's up. So, look, I got to ask, because I, sometimes I like to ask questions that are off the cuff. If you if you weren't doing music right now, and we're going to take we're gonna take acting out too, what would you be doing? I'd be working a nine to five, making it through life. All right, any particular nine to five? I mean, right, right now I'm finna go to work right now, but like I work at UT Southwestern, so I mean, it was just like to me, like anything that keep me busy, keep me out of trouble. I take it nine to five, going to make my own money. All right, now say you were locked on an island, or say you got sent to an island. And when you got sent to this island, you could only bring two songs by South Fame. And you're going to play these two songs for the natives on this island. What two songs by South Fame would you bring to introduce to this island? I'll take Too Lit. I'll take my song, Two Story. All right. And why would you take those two? Too lit is a club band. 
If I'm locked on the island, I guarantee I have everybody coming out from trees dancing with that two lit. And with that two story, they're going to feel where I came from. And then the, also the beat going to have them moving too. So I take them two songs just because it's going to tell you about my life and the other one going to have you moving and dancing. All right. Um, tell me a little bit about how you plan on getting female fans. Because, you know, female fans make up the largest portion of the buying market when it comes to hip-hop music. So what do you have for the ladies? For the ladies, I have a new Turk song I'm working on. Don't get me wrong, it's going to be out on True Story 2.0, or I might release it as a single, I don't know yet. And then I also have a mixtape called Feelings that they're going to feel. All right. And right now, how are the females responding to you and your music? I mean, when they hear when they hear too lit, I guess I automatically a twerk session. It's like nothing else. Like that's what they be waiting on. Like when I did a show not too long ago, I did my first song. They was feeling it, but then when I did that too lit, they just got the mood. They got the turn to it. So I, I feel like females love that too lit. All right, now in your lifetime that you can remember, what has been the best ten dollars you've ever spent? What did you spend it on? The best ten dollars I ever spent. Uh huh. What did you spend it on? And I ain't gonna lie, I like to eat, man. So I ain't, you know, go to Rudy's Chicken on the media. A piece of butter. That was, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's been about the best ten dollars I ever spent. That was only ten dollars. All right, that's what's up. So you know, I mentioned at the top of the show, Ti just opened his trap music museum. If Ti were to call Sauce Fame right now. And said, "I want, I want you to give me one item to put in my museum. What item would you contribute to the Ti Museum that belongs to South Fame?" An item. Yep. Well, I contribute my necklace. Okay. So, what kind of necklace you got? I got a Jesus piece, and the Jesus piece I've been having it for a long time. It's like when I first started rapping, I knew like. That was the first time, like, I really just, I knew, like, man, like, I really want to start doing this. So I had went and bought me a Jesus piece to mark when I first started rapping. So it's like everywhere I go, I keep that Jesus piece. When I'm in the car and I'm in situations, man, I just really, I really pray. And then I just look at my Jesus piece, like, all the time. All right. How has the social media, how has social media helped or hurt you in your career thus far? Social media helped me a lot because when I read my songs on Instagram, you can promote them. And once you promote them, they can get to everybody that's on social media. So, like, that also played a, a big part in my YouTube viewers, my Spotify viewers, my iTunes viewers, my Apple Music viewers. So, social media really, really is the big thing. Seconds. Helping artists get out. All right. So, speaking of social media, give out your social media info. Let the people know whether it's a website, your Twitter, your Instagram, your YouTube. Let the people know how to find you and do me one big favor and introduce the joint too lit that we're going to end the show with. Hey, you can find me on YouTube at Fame Music. And on Instagram, you can follow me at Sauce. 60 seconds. You can follow me at Boss Man. You know what and hey, this my this my head joint too late. Appreciate it, my guy. One hundred. Hey, you know what I used to play with that whole too late, man. I bet you I'm in that motherfucker. Hey, hey, stop playing. My wrist too late. Goddamn. Look at the ass on my bitch. Ooh. Look at my chain I hit. Hey. I swear these niggas were bitch. Real. When I hit the stage, it's lit. Down. You know my pops, they dick. Hey. I'm chasing chicks out of bitch. Can't wait to flow my wrist. Hey, I'm too lit. Too lit. I'm too lit. Down. I'm too lit. Goddamn. I'm too lit. Hey. Look at the ass on my bitch. Ooh. Look at my chain I hit. When I hit the stage, it's lit. You know my pops, they dick. I'm too lit. 
looking for Cupid so I can get a baby that I can spend my life with. I ain't chasing no bitch. I'm trying to get married so I can get some carries and go to flood my wrist. I'm tired of looking basic. Man, these niggas hate it to see a nigga make it. Can't stop I'm dream chasing. Stop saying they always hating, but you don't been popping lately. You gotta stay on your grind so in the end you shine. Hey, my wrist too lit. Look at the ass on my bitch. Look at my chain how I hit. I swear these niggas with bitch. When I hit the stage is lit. You know my pipes they thick. I'm chasing chase out a bitch. Can't wait to flood my wrist. Hey, I'm too lit. I'm too lit. I'm too lit. I'm too lit. Look at that ass on my bitch. Look at my chain how I hit. When I hit the stage is lit. You know my pipes they lit. When I hit the stage is lit. First time performing, I hear shit. My brother on the side of me scared that shit, but we still found a way to rock that bitch. Look at my manager, damn me lit. Remember them times when he now shit. Now we got everybody jamming our music. We like Nike, man. I swear we just do it. Thinking about the times where we didn't have a plate. Sleeping outside because we came in late. Man, I promise my cooking up a great. She get all A because she built that away. While mama working hard just to make her way. Fame the game, man. Ain't shit late. For I'm in station, man. That is the game. Sipping on lean because it keeps me safe. Woo! One time for my man, Mr. Sauce Fame, Too Lit. Um, it's your boy Vic XL. It's the Ride Dirty Show. We're finna get up out of here. We'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. with radio. another exciting guest. Um, again, do not drink lukewarm water and cayenne pepper. It makes your heart beat really, really fast. It's your boy Vic XL, man. I'm out of here. One love to everybody checking out the show. Peace.